This is exactly how the MCAT's going to test you on column chromatography. We are going to look at how this setup here can produce a graph that looks like this. And if you like these videos, click on the link in my bio to see my MCAT community that has over 500 pages worth of drawings and explanations like these. In column chromatography, we fill a column, which is this container right here that has a spout at the end. And we fill this column with a bunch of beads as shown by the circles there. We pour a solution of molecules through the column, and what we're trying to do is separate certain molecules. We can separate these based on a variety of things, depending on what type of beads we put inside the column. We're going to be talking about size exclusion chromatography, which is also called gel filtration. The beads in gel filtration have a bunch of holes in them. The molecules that are in the solution that we're pouring into this column can then go inside of the beads through those holes. Once it's in the bead, it gets trapped inside of the bead, but only temporarily. Eventually, it will make its way back out of the bead. The smaller a molecule is, the more likely it is to be able to fit inside and get stuck into one of those beads. That means that as small molecules go down this column, they'll get stuck in a bead, they'll eventually make their way out, but then they might get stuck in another bead, and that continues as they go down this column. Meanwhile, a larger molecule is not going to get trapped that many times, if at all. So let's say it gets trapped just once right here, and then it makes its way out of that bead and out of the column. All of that means that the smaller a molecule is, the longer it takes for it to exit the column. And that is what this graph here is showing us. The x-axis is the volume that we've poured through the column. So let's say that we pour our sample, like we see here, through the column, and a bunch of the molecules get stuck inside of beads. Some molecules might be able to pass through the column, but there might be some that are trapped in the beads. And in order to get those molecules untrapped, we are going to have to pour more of that mobile phase through the column. So more of the solvent of whatever that solution was. And we keep pouring that in until eventually all of the molecules that we're interested in will exit the column. As we're pouring more of that into the column and we're collecting more volume that's leaving the column, we are going to be measuring the absorbance values of what we collect. And the absorbance value will show us when a molecule has exited. And every time that we have a peak in absorbance, that means that we are having some of the molecules of interest exiting that column. We said earlier that the larger the molecule is, the easier it exits that column. So we can look at this graph and the peaks that show up with the least amount of volume are created by the largest molecules. And then the next peak would be slightly smaller, and then the peaks to the far right required the most amount of volume, so those would be the smallest molecules.